Sometimes, I don't know what people are thinking. I really don't. Well, I don't know which way my camera is pointing. It looks like it's pointing completely away from me. <laughs> I guess it's okay. But, you know, we have probably the most powerful advocate in the world that we could pray to and ask to intercede on our behalf, that we could ask God to do something. And He, according to what Jesus said, would do it. That we could ask of the Father, because He desires for us to know Him even as intimately as we knew Jesus, or as His disciples did. For He said that the Father loves us also, likewise, as much as Jesus did. So, sometimes, I don't know, maybe I got it wrong, but it seems like when people are arming themselves and putting on their guns and their rights and their lawyers and their privileges and their insurances and their worries and their frets and their cares and anxieties and alarm systems and all these other things, I wonder, has anybody put on God? Has anybody turned to Him and asked Him to take care of you? Seems like that would be the wiser choice. Now, maybe, you know, there's a benefit to doing some of those things, but all of those things? Turn to Jehovah thy way, Psalm 37, 6. Whatever it is that presses you, go tell the Father. Put the whole matter over to his hand, and so shalt thou be freed from the dividing, perplexing care that the world is full of. When you are either to do or suffer anything, when you are about any purpose or business, go tell God of it and acquaint him with it. Yes, burden him with it, and then you have done your part for caring. No more care, but a quiet, sweet diligence in your duty, and dependence on him for the carriage of all thy matters. Roll your cares upon him and thyself with him, as one burden all unto your God. We shall find it impossible to commit our way unto the Lord, unless it be a way that he approves. It is only by faith that a man can commit his way unto the Lord. If there be the slightest doubt in the heart that our way is not a good one, faith will refuse to have anything to do with it. This committing of our way must be continuous and not a single act. However extraordinary and unexpected may seem to be his guidance, however near the precipice or the cliffside we may walk, he may or he may take you, you are not to snatch the guiding reins out of his hands, but let him lead you, for such is what God desires to do. We are to trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not to our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledge Him, and He would direct our path. Are we willing to have our ways submitted to God, for Him to pronounce judgment on them? There is nothing a Christian needs to be more scrutinizing about than about his confirmed habits and his viewpoints about life, love, leading, abiding, walking, and talking with and about God. He is too apt to take for granted the divine appropriation for them and not be appropriated by them or not own up to what he is wrong about that God would have spoken to him for. Why are some Christians so anxious and so fearful? Evidently because they have not left their way with the Lord. They took it to him, gave it to him, and grabbed it right back so they could worry. I don't know because I know a lot of times people think that I'm rather idealistic or somehow not being as real as what I really am. That they think maybe I protect myself in some way or I don't put myself out in harm's way in some respects not step out of faith. Reality of what our life is all about. But I live in a violent neighborhood and I live in a violent world that by all means and every opportunity that I can, I have said to the Lord, my God, God, you better stop it because I'll go get involved. And the amazing thing is, is that God has loved my belligerence in that way because he has gone out of his way to bring the circumstances away from me so that I would not participate in them lest I bring my interference into it and cause something to be out weighed by peace because I would want to bring peace into the circumstances and the situation and he has promised to protect me. So the amazing thing is is that in a lot of ways I'm actually kind of belligerent about it. I really do step out to see 
what it is that's going on about me. Because I really believe that God wants us to bring the light into a situation. And until it's time for us to go home, that God says, I'm bringing you home, then we're not going to die. That's obvious. It's not like you know we're risking something that God doesn't already know is going to happen. But rather, we're stepping out in faith, knowing that God's going to take care of it. And if it wasn't time for us to go home, then we're not going to go home. But if we are going to go home, then it's time to go. So it's really not that big a deal to step out in faith and to trust the Lord to lead the way. So I think what he's trying to say to us is maybe we ought to take it to the Lord in prayer, give it to him, and then do as he says. For if he leads us to go into the midst of a, even a violent confrontation, we may be the ones to bring about a peaceful solution. God has placed you right where you're at for a specific purpose. He's designed you the way you are, even as he's designed me, to bring about his plan, his will, and his way. So today, turn to the Lord and give him your cares and your worries, your anxieties, your frustrations. And all that you do, commit your way unto him, and he shall bring it to pass.